TRW <laughs> Crusades 2 is the game. Um, the battle is uh, Hob. Alright, just some... Uh, just some... Uh, just some information up front before we get started. Obviously it's a featureless battlefield except for there's a rise on this this corner of the map which I'm, I doubt will even come into direct play here. So featureless battlefield, road down the middle, not going to do my, or actually a trail. I don't even think it's a road. Um, no, I guess in game terms it is a road. Um, also interesting, um, so this is the Turkish army here. Uh, this army is entirely mounted and it's it's let's see probably 80% of the army is made up of these type units right here mounted bowmen um, mounted bowmen again a lot of it is actually going with the tiny line drawing that's really not a good idea but they also have the um, the fire capability and the remaining 20% of the army max maybe less is uh, these guys just regular cavalry um, again very hard to tell other than tracing the uh, the picture so when I talk about this and I and I and I'm trying to figure out who's who here what kind of unit I'm looking at um, this is what I'm doing it is typical for these games to have the little key here which they really should have put this on a player aid card. this is the type of thing that would be great for a player aid card because uh, it's a real reference thing so right so you can have three different kinds of mounted bow graphic uh, three different kinds of regular cavalry graphics then you have cavalry versus um, versus heavy cavalry um, and all different I mean four different kinds of infantrymen and again it's other than obviously paying attention to whether it has ranged fire capability or not other than that it is only the the, the actual graphic that uh, that can help you so there are men at arms in this game in this particular game so you got infantry versus men at arms right I mean <laughs> I don't want to say what what distinguishes but you got that figure versus that figure not that much difference but anyways that's what I'm doing when I'm when I'm trying to figure out <laughs> what I'm looking at all right the um, let's see what do they call it they call it the cru okay the crusader arm oh and also the Turkish army is under the uh, overall command of Ilgazi here. Um, Ilgazi, command span of six, combat uh, modifier plus one, and he has one other leader. There's one other leader on the Turkish side, and that is Toktegin. Um, he has a command value of four, um, a command rating of four, command span of six and also a plus one um plus one uh, uh combat modifier um ilgazi's overall so he's got all the yellow forces over here he's got the center left and the left oh and Toktegin has the center right and right um ilgazi starts with an attack command attack yeah attack command oh it's this generation of Chits. Oh, the worst. Um, Toxigan starts when, with an advanced command. Um, the uh, Turkish army is the first player uh, for this scenario. Hob, Battle of Hob. Um, all right, on the Crusader side, we have. And I'll, I guess I'll take a closer look when I'm lo looking from that side. Um, but that's the uh, Crusader army there. So. Um, Turkish army. Um, I like the idea of not changing orders on the first turn. Um, I've never seen a, a, an order written out in black and white, but 
It also kind of, kind of... I mean, on the one hand, it kind of makes sense. On the other hand, in a game sense, I certainly would not... I certainly don't, I don't think it should be disallowed in, a, in game terms, but... Yeah. Um, so first player movement phase, Turkish movement uh, phase, everybody's obviously in... in um, in a uh, command uh, range, although I, I should point out that both commanders are using command by extension. So Toktagin is tracing to to this guy. So these two guys are in direct command, and these two guys are in command by extension. Same thing over here. Il Ilgazi is tracing to the first few guys here, and the rest of them off the camera there are in command by extension. Okay. Um, movement. Um, all of these mounted, every single mounted unit here. Oh no, I'll take that back. Never mind. Never mind. All of the mounted bowmen have eight movement allowance. And the light, or are they light? Regular cavalry. I should say cavalry, but people wanting to distinguish between heavy and light. But the cavalry units have, have movement values of six. The far flanks are only the mounted bowmen, so they're all eight, and all of this grouping over here are, are, are the uh, movement allowance eight uh, mounted bowmen. These ones are mixed, so these ones mix the cavalry and mounted bowmen. Okay, um, I was thinking earlier, I think I want the heavy right. I, Heavy left to kind of wheel into the wheel into the Crusaders like that, while these guys try to get around the flank, try to envelop this unit, and then try to harass in the rear here. Uh, that's the general idea I have for the for the Turks. Um, I think that's it. Uh, especially since all, so much of this movement is uniform, I'll just come back uh, later in the turn. Overall, the uh, the Turks have pretty much gotten right into it, except that the mounted uh, bow, the mounted bowman, can fire at a uh, range of two, but it is minus one. So I, I thought I would just go ahead and pull back and start with a first, uh, a first volley at what for them is longer range. Il Ghazi, of course, has an attack command, so. Uh, it was harder to hold back. It's harder to hold back. Um, we've got some cavalry in here, though, um, adjacent to the Crusader uh, skirmisher uh, bowman there. Um, one thing came up. I'm just going to note it. Um, I'm not even sure what to... Units can only fire through their frontal hex, hex sides. Um, so... Uh, I guess this is also talking through it. Um, frontal hex sides. So I had the case come up, like here, for example. This. Um, so without exception, all combat units, but not skirmishers, um, have two front hexes for for this unit here. Two front hexes, flank, flank, rear, and rear. Um, they can only fire through frontal hex sides. You can also only melee through frontal hex sides. Uh, is that specified? Um, yes, combat units two front. In one of its com yeah yeah front frontal hexes, but firing through the frontal hex sides. Does that mean when it comes out here? I mean, if he wants to fire on this unit, can he? It's coming out the the very point. Um, now I'm going to say it says fire out through the uh, fire through frontal hex sides and I'm going to go ahead and say that the point is part of every well, the point is part of both hex sides. So in other words this hex sides includes that point and that point end point end point but this hex side also includes this end point and this end point so Thinking about it that way, I'm gonna let uh, I'm gonna say firing down the hex, this adjacent hex side. It does touch the hex, the frontal hex side of the firing unit, so I'll go with that. But 
I never have it. I don't even I don't remember that coming up or but uh huh. thought I'd mention that in passing. So I think we're gonna have a defensive fire because we're gonna go to the uh, first player's uh, combat phase, fire combat sub phase, step one defensive fire. Um, again, old time war gamers, especially those very very familiar with this uh, family of games, knows that the combat system does not stay uniform. It does not. It's gener. Well, no, I can't even say that. It just doesn't stay the same. So. For Crusades 2 that we're playing here, uh, it's a D10. Um, what we're doing is we're looking for the type of fire. We're looking out how many hexes that that unit is firing. The X means that that's out of range. The unit can't fire to that range. Um, the dash means they can fire to that, that range, but there's no modifier. And then we have plus or minus one modifiers. Um, so we're talking mounted bow. Oh no, wait, this is defensive fire first. So we have bow, like these guys right here. So we have bow, 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 bow. Oh, that's it. Okay, so there's a little, this is, it's not quite as, oh, there's not quite as many um, ranged fire attackers as I thought on the Crusader side. All right, so we're just talking about bow, bows. You can fire out to three hexes. They have plus one if it's at a range of one hex. So then for, this is your, you get your modifier. Then you come here, you find the fire at the top type of unit firing. Bow, this is the column. This is the results column you're using. D10, again, it's going to be your range modifier. Plus you have minus one if target is heavy cavalry, crusader heavy cavalry. I knew there was, I knew I'd seen that at some point. And minus one if target is men at arms. It's also important, but that's the only two plus the range modifiers. Train modifiers up here. Again, there aren't going to be any any in this battle. You roll, you roll. Uh, so you roll a ten-sided die. An M is um, every unit in the hex. So all combat units in the target has m must check morale. They they each check individually. Okay, and then one means the top unit in the in the hex takes a step loss, and then all units in that hex. Uh, check uh, morale. Hope I said that right. I was talking about morale checks. Hope I didn't say melee checks. Morale checks. All right. Uh, we'll see what the Crusader Bowman in the center can come up with. Okay. So the Creator uh, Crusader bows did not uh, did not come up with anything. There were some close calls. Um, but uh, just nothing went their way in the center there. So now we're going to go to uh, offensive fire, and we're going to have quite a bit. Um, but I just want to talk about the one kind. I mean, there's only one kind of. Actually, there's only one kind of range. This is a pretty. This is a pretty straightforward battle. This is probably good for learning the system. So on the Crusader side, I'm seeing you just have um, foot bowmen. And on the Turkish side, you only have mounted bowmen that have ranged fire capability. So, yep, so that makes it quite easy. So, again, for the mounted bowmen, um, they, they can fire out to two hexes, minus one at two hexes. Um, and then mounted bow over here. So, obviously, mounted bow, as you would imagine, uh, have a little bit harder time than foot bowmen. Um, and again, I need to remember Crusader. Is there any? Let's see there. Hmm. I'll have to. I'll take a look at that. Um, and these guys might be. These guys might be men at arms as well. So I do need to pay attention to what the targets are. Um, and I'm going to do all this firing across the line, and we'll see if they come up with anything. If the Turks. Turkish mounted bowmen come up with anything. When I say Turkish, obviously I just mean the Turkish side. Obviously there could be multiple nationalities involved here, but I just mean the Turkish side, and I'm also saying Tur Turkish side only because that's what what the designer decided to call this this side under the command overall command of Ilghazi. 
Okay, since a lot of these are going to be very similar, if not identical, duplicates, um, the first fire here, the very first one, uh, rolled pretty good eight, but it's definitely not enough. Actually, I figured out, I think, when the mounted bowmen are firing at two hexes away and they're firing at that target, <laughs> I, I was really shocked, surprised, to find out that these are Crusader Heavy Cavalry. Um... There's nothing that tells me, uh, anyways, it is Crusader Heavy Cavalry. Um, one way, although this is really not like ideal, but to flip it over, if it, if it doubles, you know, if it doubles its combat strength, that's the eight. If it increases its movement uh, allowance, that's seven. And, and if it increases its morale by one, that's the six on the back side versus the front side. That means it's Crusader Heavy Cavalry because that means this is um, non-charging and charging. Um, I know, I remember seeing in at least one other game from this family that they actually have the, a picture of a charging uh, mounted warrior on the back, which makes it a lot easier. So here you, you have to look at the, uh, the value, or that's one way you look at the values. That's not ideal because you got to pick the counter up. Um, other than that, I mean, I did, you know, again, it's like playing a, well, it's like a matching game here. Okay, I did find the picture. It is for Crusader Heavy Cavalry, but frankly, it also looks like it looks like just it just looks like heavy cavalry. It looks like looks like light cavalry. Oh, except light cavalry should have a range capability. Okay, so there should be an asterisk. But it looks like, and then it looks like normal cavalry. That's probably the worst because then. I don't know, you're going to have to pick up the piece. So anyways, this this is apparently Crusader Heavy Cavalry. Uh, so that's minus one. So it's minus one for range two, minus one for range, or for the target being Crusader Heavy Cavalry. That means that's minus two. That means that they're only going to hit on a ten. Ten minus, uh, a ten minus two to eight is going to be a morale check. Um, so I... I talked through that uh, to show that uh, again they're only going to hit on a 10 uh, at range 2 against Crusader Heavy Cavalry. So I actually got one as I was coming around firing each of these uh, Turkish mounted bowmen that guy rolled a 10 against this target there so that unit has to do a morale check his morale was not very good at the five. I guess these crusaders aren't happy about campaigning out here. Oh, but they still roll a one. Ah. All right, they pass their morale check. Um, continue on with the fire across the rest of the line. Now, yeah, some of these are going to. Let me see. Yeah, a couple of the uh, couple of the mounted Turkish bowmen are going to be at one hex away, so they won't have the minus one at least. For range, uh, for range, yeah. Okay, there were a few uh, close calls, but no more. Um, now we're going to go to the melee phase. I guess declare um, here, one here. Um, these two guys against that um, skirmisher there. Um, here against the. Oh, okay, so three three melees. Um, this first one. Um, this is this is good. This is uh, Turkish cavalry against the um, the um, Crusader heavy cavalry. All right, so. Yeah. All right, melee procedure. I think melee procedure is pretty uh, standard, except in this. Uh, I think we have. I think we have. I'm trying to remember if we have berserk, the berserk mechanic in this. Yes, we do. Yeah, we do have berserk. Okay. All right, we'll get to that. But melee procedure. Um, again, here one on one. Make it easy, attack renounces, uh, blah, blah, attacking units, check the morale. Obviously, as usual for this design, um, the uh, Turkish uh, 
cavalry there needs to check check against their eight morale. They roll an eight, so they are in. Um, then we have uh, the possibility for retreating before before melee, which isn't is not an option here. Um, not an option here. Um, so then the defender, uh, the uh, defending a crusader heavy cavalry with a morale of seven, and they fail. And they fail. They, they definitely going to rout. No, no question there. And uh, uh, they are going to go back uh, three hexes. Um, go one, two, three. Turn away direction they're going. And then pretty sure they have to advance. They can change facing. Um, yeah, yeah, they'll stay there. Face like that. All right, here we have uh, two, um, eight and eight morale. Seven, first guy on the right passes, the guy on the left, the guy, the unit on the left passes. <laughs> All right, here we have, obviously, we have a, a skirmisher unit. Skirmish units being attacked by cavalry units may retreat on a die roll of eight, nine, or ten. Um, so eight, nine, or ten. Oh, they get a nine. Wow. Uh, so they are able, and they, and they can retreat one to three hexes. Owning player's choices. The attacker must then advance at least one unit into the vacated hex. Um, he can... Yeah, I'll just leave it there. And then one unit advances, we'll do that. Alright. Oh, um... Charging? Okay, charging Crusader Heavy Cavalry. Okay, that's not... Not this case. We'll get to that later. Um, here we've got six and six for these. Oh, 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 oh. Wait. You know what? I declared it. I declared it, but uh, notice those are the mounted bowmen. I did that entirely too fast. I shouldn't have. At least this guy failed his morale check. Oh, but he's in. So the other guy's in. Um, I guess I'll leave that there. And then uh, the Crusader Heavy Cavalry. Yeah, he passes. He's in. He has a morale of seven. Yes, he is. All right, this is... <laughs> All right, so uh, now, we've got, now we're going to do the results. I'll just roll the die first for both sides, then we'll figure it out. Five for the... Five for the... Uh, Turks there, and three for the um, Crusader Heavy Cavalry. Um, so looking at command shits. Okay, the total value for the one um, Turkish uh, Cavalry is three, so he's on the one to three column. Um, unit type modifier, this is what's going to kill him. Bow Cavalry. Okay, so here's the, the Unit type modifier table, basic attacker versus defender gets you a modifier. So attacking bow cavalry against uh, crusader heavy cavalry. Here's minus two. So we're already at minus two. Um, cavalry with attack command. Yes, that's plus one. Um, I, think, I think that's it. Yeah, so it's minus one, five minus one is four, no result. Uh, Crusader Heavy Cavalry rolled really low, but their, their unit type modifier is plus two. Um, they have, what kind of command, I guess? I guess he's under Baldwin. Stand? Um, well, actually, stand helps them. Defending units with stand have plus one die roll modifier. Um, I think it's plus three. Oh, you know what? He should have got a flank attack. 
He should have got a flank attack. That that still would be not be enough for a result. Um, Crusader cavalry rolled a three plus three. Well, well that's six, but he's on the four to six column because he has a value of four. So he just barely got actually a morale uh, morale check. So the Turkish cavalry uh, passes his uh, morale check with a two. All right. 